there is a very good chance that your church is missing out on this one critically important part of social media. And without it, you're never going to make the connections that you really want to. My name is Greg Simpson. I'm the minister at St. Andrews United Church in Chatham. Communications have always been a critical part of church life. And anytime there is a major change in how people communicate or the technology around communications, it's going to impact churches. Social media is totally changing the way people interact with each other. But most churches miss this one important part, and because of it, they hold themselves back. It's quite accidental. You're probably doing a lot of things exactly right, and you're probably watching how other churches are doing it. And you can follow their technique, and you can try and copy their strategy, but somehow your posts don't get nearly the same traction as theirs do. You've got to stop worrying about the numbers. I know that within churches, it's easy to look at how many people showed up, whether it be in person or online, and how many people are giving to the church. Some churches even count things like how many visits are happening or how many people choose to become more deeply involved in church and in their faith. But it's so easy to focus on things like Facebook followers and likes on Instagram and miss that those have almost no impact on your church's mission. So I want to describe a little bit of what we've done here because we've made a bunch of mistakes and maybe you can learn from our mistakes. The first most important one is we used to think that social media was just yet another place to post our events. And of course it is. If you don't go online and invite people to your worship service, then there's a good chance they're not going to come. If you don't spend time talking about the wonderful outreach that you guys are doing, then people won't know about that either. But that's all one directional. That's a broadcast. That's more similar to TV or radio or newspaper. And maybe you've spent time doing those things in the past, but that isn't highlighting the best of what social media can be for you as a church. Another thing that we've kind of missed the boat on is spending enough time to focus on it. Most often, social media communications are something that happens when somebody else doesn't have another job to do. Or we've got this person who knows a little bit about social media, so they're going to go do that thing when they're not also doing their other job. It's taken us a while to shift our priorities so that we are more actively communicating with people in the places where they want to hear from us, in the places where they're already looking. Because here's the reality. The people in your community are looking for deeper faith. They've got questions about spirituality and they don't really know how or where to ask them. So when you've got a question about something, where do you go? Do you Google it? Do you look for reviews on Facebook? Do you ask your friends online how they might answer this question? Well, if as a church, you aren't in those places, then you're going to lose the chance of maybe being part of the answer for them. And so it's taken us a little while to get there. And I bet you lots of you are already there. You know that you've got to be visible online. You know that you've got to be part of those conversations just as much as you need to be visible in your community and showing up at events and being in the places where people are. But that still misses this one critical part of what social media can be for churches. And truly, it's the one thing that's going to change how you interact with the world around you, how you reach out to people who really, really want to know more about you, but don't know how to engage. Another thing that a lot of churches do is take their Sunday morning and post it online. And I also love that idea because if you've got somebody who's church shopping, who doesn't know who you are, or maybe they're not comfortable to step through the doors of a church yet, well, they can watch your service. They can see what sorts of music you share. How do you address the scripture? What does your sermon look like? How is the worship service led? What do the prayers sound like? What's the general feeling of your service? Very important stuff. So please do that as well. Remember, you guys are creating content every single Sunday. Capture it, use it, share it. Because in the time when your church leadership is feeling really spread thinly, that content exists. The work they're already doing can be shared. And those are ways that people can connect with you. 
but it's still falling short. So what is that thing that you've been missing out on? It's the fact that social media is a two-way street. This communication shift is totally different than newspapers and posters and TV and radio. It's different than your email newsletter. It's different than all other communications that you're used to doing right now. Social media gives you a chance to start a conversation and carry it in two directions. This isn't just about getting your content and your news and your events in front of people, but it's actually about showing up and building a relationship with them. Just ask yourself this, how many different places do people have an opportunity to comment, to respond, to share something that's important to them, or ask you a question? Probably you've got some folks who reach out via email and thank goodness for them. But today that feels fairly formal. You've got lots of people with questions who don't even know where to start and to dig through your website and find the minister's email address and send it off to them, they're just not going to do it. But what about social media? What about inviting people into a conversation through your Instagram feed? What about Facebook? How many people can be invited to respond in comments? What about your blogs and your YouTube channel? All the different places where your viewers, the people you're trying to connect with, where they have an opportunity to reach out to you. Are you as a church making sure that you can respond to them? That that gets in front of the best person to answer those questions? That people who deeply desire to build relationships feel that you actually exist on the other side of that? I think sometimes churches get so wrapped up in following the instructions of people who are clearly quite successful and you download a social media posting calendar or you watch a collection of YouTube videos or you mimic what somebody else is doing, but that's all going outward. Where are your priorities around the people who reach out to you? Where are you spending your time and your effort to make sure that every person who connects, who wants to connect, who tries to connect, reaches a person, reaches a heart, connects on a spiritual level so that you can build a relationship with them. Because that is what churches are the best at doing. We're amazing at building relationships, at meeting each other in a humble and vulnerable space and saying, you've got questions, I've got questions, let's explore them together. They're saying, I'm not sure exactly where my faith is, but I know this and this and this, and I'd love to hear your opinion about that. To sum it all up, the one thing that you're missing out on is building relationships. And it's actually one of the things that social media is best at. If you can see how this one suggestion will totally change the way your church uses social media, I invite you to come to downtown Chatham right here at St. Andrews on October 21st and 22nd. We're going to be looking at social media as a form of evangelism. We're going to be exploring the appreciative inquiry process and how that can really change the way you look at yourself as a church and look at the beautiful future that you have where you are. We're going to reinvigorate our relationship with worship and we're going to deepen conversation about technology during a worship service. And if that's not enough, we also invite you into a conversation called Green Priestcraft, exploring the relationship that we as church have with the world around us, how the ecological conversations are critically important to our theology as well. You are going to want to find out more details, so click in the description below, follow the link, register, come out to Chatham on October 21st and 22nd. I look forward to seeing you there. I love you all. Bye for now.